let Jessica record it for us. You're ready to roll. Okay, so <clears throat> welcome, welcome, welcome to Mix It Up Monday Night Call. I'm so super glad you guys are here. And if we're going to make sure everybody stays muted, so that way we don't have any background noise. So our topic for the call tonight is bag parties and hostess coaching. Um, we're going to have several different people speak tonight, and we'll also have an open mic opportunity for everyone to else to join in, ask questions, or give your tips and tricks for this. Um, we have Becca, Director Becca is going to start us off tonight, and she is Director of Rising Butterflies. Uh, she's not new to us, but uh, this is going to be the first time she's going to kind of speak on the Monday night call. And for those of you that don't know, if this is your first time, we have have a mix it up Monday call every single Monday, either at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. according to what's kind of what's going on. Um, moving forward, we're possibly going to be changing the time to 8 p.m. every night. The only time we're not here is if it's a holiday or something crazy happening with Cincy, maybe, you know, whatever it could be. So Becca, if you're ready, um, you can take it away and I'm going to take some notes. So if you guys are note takers, grab your pen and paper. Okay, so I am in the car. I just got done tutoring. I was trying to get my tutoring done because I was like, I gotta, I'm the first talker. So here we go. Um, today, I definitely did a lot more training, especially whenever we did it over the weekend. And I really put some fire into my, my mind and my heart. And I, I'm hoping that it spreads to y'all because it's amazing. Like I can't contain myself anymore that how excited I am that we have we all, whether you're a new consultant, whether you're an old consultant, we can restart our business right now because February 1st, we have a new catalog. We have new scents. We have new warmers. We can use new ideas. We can do new bag parties. So this is the time to really be focusing on what do I want to change in my business? How do I want to go into the new catalog season? Um, I am driving, like I said. So if I cut out, please ask me if you don't hear something and it cuts off, okay? So the first thing I want to put in y'all's head is mindset. When we talk about mindset, about parties, I mentioned on the live earlier, I am not a, I'm not a partier. I don't party. I barely do um, uh, Facebook parties. I barely, I don't do any home parties. That's, I haven't. Um, and I haven't, I don't really do um, bag parties. And unfortunately, for me, it's hurt my business because I've been in such a bad mindset about parties that I haven't took that opportunity to grow in that area. And I think that new catalog season is a perfect time to restart and rethink about how you want to do things. So everybody has a basically kind of like, if I ask you, what can't you do? You can name me 15 things that you cannot do. But if I ask you, what can you do? You're like, oh, well, let me think about it. We need to switch that. If I ask you what you can do, I need to hear 15 things you can do. And whenever I ask you what you can't do, that's when I need to hear, well, I don't know what I can't do because I can do everything. And home parties, bag parties, Facebook parties, you can do it. So a tip that I did today, and it really helped me, and it's gonna sound really crazy, guys, but in order to do this, you gotta step out of your comfort zone. I want you to write three things down that you cannot do that you say that I cannot do when it comes to your Cincy business, whether it's like, I can't recruit, I can't get higher P PRV, I can't do parties, I can't do this. I want you to write three things down that you tell me that you cannot do that's gonna hurt, hinder your business. And then whenever you get those three things down, it's gonna sound crazy, I want you to do whiniest complaining voice. I don't have time, I can't do parties, I'm not good at it. I want you to scream that at least 10 times to yourself. And we're gonna scratch that. We're gonna scratch all that thing, those things you're saying. We're like a record, okay? So we're gonna scratch that broken record of I can't, I can't, I can't. And we're gonna put in a new record saying I can. So then after you wrote down your three things that you can't do, I want you to write three things you can do when it comes to your Cincy business. Do more. You know, it's up to you completely. And then once you have those three things down, 
again, you're going to scream out to yourself, but in the most powerful voice that you have, like how you're talking to people or training people. I want you to use your big girl voice. And I want you to say, I can do parties. I can do Facebook parties. I do have the time. I want you to do that 10 times because you are going to be retraining your mindset. You're going to tell your mind what you can do instead of what you can't do. And when it comes to home parties, bag parties, Facebook parties, I hear a lot of, I can't do it. I don't have enough people. I don't have any interest. I don't have the time. We need to stop thinking that way because that is hindering our businesses. And not only does it hinder partying, it hinders going and reaching out to people. It hinders your recruiting. We need to do better when it comes to our mindset. And we have, uh, like I said, a brand new opportunity with a new catalog. Did somebody say something? <laughs> nope, we are listening to you preach girl, keep going. Okay, so sorry, I just pulled up to my house, so great. So after you got your new mindset, now we're going to put a system in place. What do we need to do? Because a lot of people will be, take these notes and a lot of people will say, I want more, but you don't show up and you don't give it your all. You just take the notes and then you put them back down on your desk and then you don't do anything with them. We have to stop doing that. That is such a bad habit. As consultants, as people that want to grow in life, we the things that we write down, the things that speak to us, you have to be willing to reach for it. And a lot of time, I learned this today one thing if there's one thing that you say I want to do what can you do today right now to get you closer to that goal because if you don't put action to it you're not going to go anywhere with it you're not going to feel as motivated as you were when you said oh I want to be a director you're not going to feel that after you done went home and took a shower and now you're watching tv you need to put some kind of action into place when you make your goals so like today, whenever I um, made my goals, I immediately put them to action. I immediately started reaching out to people I've never reached out to. I immediately started putting systems in place for the new catalog um, just to get where I need to go in my goals because if we don't do it, we're not gonna get there. And so, like I said, new catalog season, what do you want out of the new catalog? How do you wanna present the new catalog? Um, things like that. So even, and like I said, I'm not a partier, I don't really do parties, but I want to learn how to, and I want to dig my toes into that section of this company because I haven't been and it's been hindering me. And so now it's time to reset my mind on parties, reset my thoughts and my goals on parties and get my head down and get to work. So I really want to put that to put that information in y'all's ears because I believe that our mindset is one of the biggest things that hinder our um, transitioning or our restart and stuff because we sit there and we say we can't, we can't, we can't and we can. This is our business. Every one of you are the boss babe of your business and you can do whatever you want. You know, Well, within compliance, y'all know what I mean. But y'all are the bread and butter. Like you can do it. Stop, stop comparing yourself to other people when it comes to what are they doing. Take action in your own business and do what works for you. Not everything works for everybody. You need to try all kinds of parties, a home party, a basket party, um, a Facebook party, because guess what? Not all of them work for everybody, but everybody usually finds one that does work for them. So we really need to start trying and step out of our comfortability zone and just do it. And if you don't have nobody to host a party, you host a party. You let people know on Facebook, hey, I'm throwing my own Cincy party, or you don't even have to use party. You know, I, ha I have my own link set up for my Cincy customers or anybody that's interested and do it that way. You don't have to have a host. You don't have to be coaching anybody. You could be doing it yourself and re-coach yourself on how to do parties. And I would take that as the first step, which I'm going to be doing tonight. I'm going to set up my own party link because I need to coach myself on how to party because if I don't know how to party, I'm not going to be able to coach anybody else how to party. So I think I've been talking for about 10 minutes. I think it's time for the next person, but that is my advice. And you know what? Stop thinking, where have I been? Where am I going? Start where you are now. Start right now. Stop waiting until tomorrow. Stop waiting until 30 minutes. Start right now because that's what's going to make a difference in your business. Okay? So, guys. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Becca. Thank you. That girl's got, she's got a fire under her, y'all. If you need some inspiration, you guys need to hit her up in her inbox. She's got a lot of it. Oh, for sure. I'm here for all the information. I'm here to preach, preach, preach. I know not everybody wants to hear it, but if you show up, you go up. Like Donna says, I mean, it's amazing how much um, change you do whenever you change the way you look at your business. That's right. We still have some people. More people are joining. <laughs> Jessica, do you want me to <laughs> give some tips and tricks now? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Okay. All right. Well, following what um, Becca said, I'm going to piggyback off of some of that. And she touched and kind of talked about different types of parties. And as we all know, with the pandemic, our party styles have changed some. It looks a little different than what it used to be. But I'm going to partially tell you, because I feel like we should speak from experience, I have never had an in-home party. And I will consider myself pretty successful in the business. So if you're sitting there thinking, I do not, I'm not a party person. I don't want to do in-home parties. This just probably isn't for me back off because that's not true. So I want you to know that there's so many different styles of parties. And a lot of us, I hear a lot with my team and other, so we don't know how to find people to have parties for us. So let's talk about that for just a minute and what that looks like. Um, this is the month of January. So our calendars, we always, what we, we always say front load. So we should be front loading our calendars for February guys, because February is next week. Our calendar should be full. And just as a personal goal that I have, each of us to our own right, but my personal goal is to have two parties per week. So let's think about that. If we set that as a goal, let's set it for two. Let's say maybe we don't quite get two booked in one week. Maybe it's only one party a week. If, if we can get one party a week, your goal should always, always be 500. And Melissa and I have talked about this several times. We used to set our party goals for 200. Why? Like, why are we shooting low? We should always be shooting for the stars. We should always have a party goal of 500. So how do we find those people that want to have a party and what types of party? I'm just going to touch a little bit on each one of those. So Facebook parties are the thing right now. Um, how to find a host. You guys, if you've started with your list of 100, which we should all have that, um, I go in and reevaluate and change mine often. You're going to look at people that are buying from you. We should always offer a party to our customers because they can get it free and half off. With the new catalog season being here, you know you guys have probably already leaked out some of that information. You have some customers, they're wanting to buy a new $50 warmer. We need to be offering them, as Becca said, say party or not say party. Ask if they want to have a Cincy Social on Facebook and earn that warmer for free or half price right this is the perfect like it couldn't be any more perfect of a time to try to get your parties booked it is a brand new catalog it that's basically i mean that's like it we're not mid catalog we're not at the end we are at the beginning of a catalog season you guys know you know you'll probably already have a list of people that you're going to want to let them know about certain warmers like if you have a friend that um is into I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know a lot about the new catalog yet. My team already knows that. Just for instances, I'm just going to say, okay, the country sunshine warmer. It's a farmhouse warmer. I'm going to have that in my kitchen because my kitchen is in farmhouse. Sit down and think about it. Your friends that have farmhouse already have maybe brought in the prairie, the prairie pitcher warmer or maybe um, the other metal can. What is it? Rustic, rustic something. Sit down, look at your customers, look at what they've bought in the past, look at what their home is decorated in. Like I can, I can tell you, Stacy's not my customer, but she's on my team. I know what her house is decorated in. I can probably already envision what warmer she's going to buy for her home. So let's think about that. You snap a picture of that, send it to Cindy and say, oh my gosh, Cindy, I know you bought, you know, the country living warmer from me because you love the farmhouse look. Look at the new country sunshine warmer that's coming. Let's totally get you a Cincy Social book so that you can get that warmer for free and half price. All she can say is no. Put a check mark by her name. At least you offered and you asked, right? Um, another easy way to get um, a hostess would be if you have somebody ordering a six pack of bars, 
Okay. They're regular. If they order a six pack of bars a month, they're maybe bi-weekly or whatever. They're not in the club, but we want them there. Um, say, hey, do you want to do it? Do you want to ask six of your friends if they want a six pack of bars also? That way you get free and half off off bars and you can get you a new warmer we have a brand new catalog that just came out and i really think that you would love the tide pool warmer it's totally the same as your decoration in your house so it's all in our wording you don't want to spam someone and say um i'm looking for five people to have a party this month do you want to do it no that just sounds so spammy and so salesy that's not a good way to try to book parties but you want to look if you're like i just don't know who to ask ask the customers that you have now because having a party that's how i've grown my customer base i i love to do battle of the hostesses parties that's not a training for tonight but look into that definitely look into that jessica does that brie does that we have have gotten so many customers and if you're feeling stagnant in your business right now and you feel like you have the same 10 people that have been buying from you from the last six months that's not going to cut it now's the opportunity for you to get those new hostesses in there to get the new products and we all know what hostess leads to hostess leads to joining sensi that is why we party we party to expand our customer base um i had and it's always nice when you have a hostess that you're not in the same circle with, right? Because you know you're gonna be getting some new customers. I had a, a Battle of the Hostess party last February, which was the best party I've ever had. It was well over $1,000. I still have nine of those customers from that party. And the thing that I think we forget or, or we maybe don't spend enough time or investing enough time in is when we get someone to order from a party, they're your customer forever, unless they flat up tell you I have another Cincy consultant. I only ordered from your party to help my best friend Jessica out. And that's happened to me multiple times and that's completely okay. I don't add those people to my VIP group. They have a consultant and I always tell them if something ever happens to your consultant, I'm your girl. Here's my phone number. I will check on you maybe once or twice and I do, you know, you send them the email saying, hey, your order's on the way. You send them that thank you from ordering from that party or however you handle that. And you've done your job as the consultant for her for that party. And then that's that sometimes is the, is the end of it. And that's okay. But I feel like so often when we have these parties and we get these orders from people that are brand new customers, we just tell them thank you. And that's it. We don't do the proper follow up. It's like, I don't understand why, because they're your customer forever when they order from you from a party. So you guys need to shift your mindset from, oh yeah, had a great party, 500 PRV. Yeah, Jessica and her friends ordered from the party and then that's it. Like, why are we not digging deeper and retaining those customers? Because if they're not gonna order from you, they're gonna order from somebody else. So it might as well be you. Um, different kind of Facebook parties. Like I said, I do Battle of the Hostess. Um, asking like if you have somebody that's just a big wax buyer, maybe they don't want, want the warmers a good way to get uh just tell them hey well, i need six of your friends if you want to ask six of your friends that we call that a texting party um you just create a link on your workstation and you send that to your hostess and 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 i always always here's the thing you need to come up with a verbiage some people say verbiage i used to say verbiage to annalise told me it was verbiage i don't know i'm gonna say verbiage um it's a funny conversation a while back anyways you as the consultant need to be the ones to create the verbiage for your parties it is not the hostess's job it is our job if you want to have a successful party you need to sit down you need to plan it out and so often i feel like we overthink it like um one of the girls i can't remember who it was they just messaged me over the week and i said hey donna can you help me come up with what to say my hostess is asking me to to give her a message to send out and i'm like oh don't overthink this this is just just a little example i would say um send this to your hostess for her to send out okay about a facebook party we do not ever want to just add people to groups or pages or events we want to always always ask first we don't want to be like the other companies we're intentional we don't want to do that so a simple little message um i sent to the hostess Hey, fill in their name. Don't, hey girl, or hey boy, or hey guy, or whatever. Hey, Jessica, my Cincy consultant, Donna, 
is helping me put on a Cincy social this week right here on Facebook. I know that you love to fragrant your fragrance your home. Would you be interested in an invite? If so, I will send you the link. Okay. Got to help them get their page, get their group going, or however you have that worked out to set up with them. Maybe it's an event, right? Hostess coaching is so super important that I have another little message that will already be in a template. I keep them on the notes of my phone so that it's the same every time. It'll be sent to my hostess about maybe two, two days before the actual party that we're having. I like to do live parties. Everybody's different. And that message is going to say, hey, hostess's name, send this out to all the people that have RSVP'd going to your party. And that message just might say, hey, just want to do give you a quick reminder that my Cincy consultant Donna is going to be doing my Facebook party live for our Cincy social tomorrow at 7 p.m. I really hope you're there. It's going to be a lot of fun. It won't take up much of your time. And there may or may not be a prize uh, drawn for everyone that joins my live. You want to entice them, right? You want to give them a reason to be there um, as though our products should be enough. Sometimes, it, you know, a little enticing doesn't hurt anything. Um, but hostess coaching is so very important. And like I said, Melissa and I used to set our goals for 200. And I, I told her, I was like, why are we setting our goal for 200? It needs to always, always be 500 because at 500, the magic happens and they can join Cincy for free. We can offer them a host join kit, which is not for this training, but maybe we can put that on the, the, the list for trainings. Maybe if there's any interest in it, you guys can drop that in the chat if there's a uh, and I'm not checking questions. I'm sure somebody will tell me in a little bit. Um, what else? Let's see. We talked about Facebook parties, texting parties, basket parties. Um, I know a lot of people are still working from home, but not everybody. And some people, are, if you're going to church, think about the people you go to church with, maybe somebody in your Sunday school class, take a fun basket party. Basket party is not, doesn't ask, actually have to be a basket party, a bag party. Some people call them tester parties. Um, you don't have to give all the testers. We've got 10 wonderful new fragrances. Maybe grab a couple of those, a couple from the clean line, a couple from the bakery line, a couple from the manly line, get you 10 to 12 testers, a couple of catalogs, um, some order forms, maybe a Scentsy pen, a calculator. Um, I personally like to always, always add up the totals for the customer. For my hostess, I have her snap a pick of the people's orders. I tell them what they're, uh, total is with tax and shipping or whatnot, whatever it is. Um, have, you know, take a cute picture of that and just say, hey, who I'm wants to take my bag to work? And let your coworkers smell these awesome new fragrances that we are fixing to launch or just launched or whatever. I never said the word party, right? So I'm, I have someone right now that I'm getting a, I guess I'm just going to call mine a bag party because that's, I put them in a clear bag. Um, might want to put a pod in there for them to use while they have it and a mini fan or maybe a wall fan. Don't have to buy new products. I go and grab stuff out of my bath, my kid's bathroom or my bedroom all the time for people to take and borrow. We also have what we call borrow baskets. Those also work well. Um, and a lot of this stuff you can YouTube if you're taking notes or put it in the chat and we'll go back and answer the questions. Um, what else do I need to cover, Jessica, on that? I'm sure somebody else has some awesome, wonderful tips also. No, I mean, even some of the things I was going to say, like you touched on, so it's perfect. Um, I think it's important we all understand how to get parties. Like, that's why we're all here. Um, the, the easiest thing and the most straightforward thing I can tell you is you have to ask. So, um, and my girls know this because we talked about it a lot over the weekend, your list of 100, it's really not negotiable. Like this is something that you will use throughout your entire Sensi career. Whether you just joined, you're six years in, 10 years in, 15 years in. This is something that I personally come back to on for everything. Rather, I'm trying to boost sales on my mystery boxes or I'm looking for hosts. I come back to this. Like this is my old one. And then today I literally went back through it because now I'm working on like a booking blitz. So get, and I can upload this file into your guys's groups too, just in case you don't have them. So if you don't have a list of hundred, that is where you have to start. Because if you don't have a list of hundred, then who are you going to ask? You can also do yourself a favor. You can look at your Facebook um, to figure out who needs to be added. You can go into your workstation, pull your contacts to see who everybody who's ever bought from you, that can go on your list of hundred. You can do Frank which is friends, 
relatives, acquaintances, neighbor, neighbor, neighbors, kid contacts. So that is a huge thing. Um, I am a very big party person, but I also do a lot of my own parties, which I am the host of. And I will tell you that that is hurting my business. And yes, you heard that correctly. And this is why it's hurting my business. When we continue to be our own hosts, we're not growing our customer base. When we're having parties and people are actually hosting, you're getting introduced to maybe four, eight, 12, 16 more contacts that are gonna get added to your list of 100. Um, so something I'm really trying to do this year is be better about having more parties where I'm not necessarily the host. So when you're having parties, it's expanding your list of 100. And it's also allowing you to have more joint conversations because when you're having those parties, exactly what Donna said, you're already, they're already selling to their friends and family. So you already know that their friends and family are engaged and like fragrance. So as soon as you go to ask them like, Hey, we're getting ready to use your host rewards. This is what you've earned, but this is what you can also use your rewards on your friends and family already like it. They're supporting your business. You're going to hit maybe shooting star. You're going to hit sensational level one. You're going to get product credit and you're going to get this in commission. I literally write it out black and white for them. Like this is what you can do with rewards or this is how you can turn it into a business. And this is everything you would get from it. And you can't, you can't have those conversations if you're the host. The only thing you can do in those situations is you can off, offer a discounted kit to maybe somebody that's on your dream team or maybe somebody that's um, showed interest in the business. Um, another thing that I do to book parties is as the catalog is changing, I start to look at who hosted for me in the spring, summer season last year. So I'll go in and look at who hosted parties in February and March and April and May. And I will start having those conversations with those same people to get their parties rebooked. If you've been working with them nonstop for the last you know, year, then you have that open dialogue. If they hosted, you delivered, and you've had no contact, it's going to be a little bit harder to get them as a returning host. Um, Another thing, I have like notes everywhere. Um, so a big thing that helps me to book parties, and I don't know if this is floating around yet. So there's a graphic that has like the different um, warmers on them, and then they have a number on each warmer. So I may post to my VIP group, which number is your favorite warmers? These are my favorite warmers that are coming. And as my customers are commenting, oh, I like number one, oh, I like number five, I will then send them a message like, hey, I saw that you like this warmer. What are your thoughts on hosting a Sensi Social? So I don't call them parties, I call them Sensi Socials um, because people get wigged out about part, the word party. Um, and then I will share a hostess special. So typically my hostess special is like, hey, if you host a qualifying Sensi Social for me, I am going to give you this warmer that you absolutely love for half off. And then I'm using my perpetual award. So I'm not spending any money on what their warmer might cost. So you have to think about it like that too. And if you're doing a host special, remember that is out of compliance to share publicly. That is something you need to do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, another thing, so kind of going into like hostess coaching, booking the party is like check one, right? Like that's a huge win. It needs to be celebrated, but how many and the ones that are on camera or you can write in the comments, yes. How many times have you gotten the yes? They're gonna book a party and then it's a complete dud. Anybody, I can't be the only one that's had dud parties. Like you're so excited for the yes and then no sales, no interaction, no nothing. Well, I'm telling you right now, either two things happen. We didn't host this coach or the host lost interest. Those are the only two things that could have happened. So I have a template and this is more so something that I do stick in like my bag parties or my Facebook parties. And I'm just going to read it and I have no problem sharing it. It just it says, thank you for hosting. Now let's get this party started. Started. Don't forget to make your wish list. Their wish list, you guys, is crucial because that is what's going to motivate them. You have to think about it. This party isn't about us. It's not about us gaining PRV. It's about them and what we can do to help them get everything on their wish list. Maybe they have diffusers, which means that if they want that free, their party has to be 800 plus PRV. If they want it half off, they have to hit at least over $350 to get to that two half price um, per diem. 
So it's important that you specify, like, don't forget your wish list and send me your wish list. And I also use it as like a sharing tool where I'll say, on Donna's wish list, she has boom, 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 boom. Like I want her customers to be engaged with what Donna is working towards. Um, and then I give a timeline. So I'll say your party will kick off Monday, November 9th, and it will end Sunday, November 15th. As soon as your party hits, I always say 200 in sales because that's where I want them to know that post credit starts. And then I go on to say, but we're searching for you to hit the magic number of 500. So your guests can get free shipping and you can get all the perks possible. And then I go over important information, which is please make sure you're starting to add your friends and family to my VIP group. Please do not add them unless you've had a conversation with them. So again, we want quantity, no, quality over quantity. I don't want somebody to add 50 people to my VIP group when they have no interest in buying at all. Typically, I also give them like guidelines where I'm like, hey, I really only want you to invite about 20 people and think about 20 people that you would actually have in your house for a home party or a birthday party or a holiday. You don't want them inviting Susie who she hasn't talked to in six years. Nobody wants to be added to any more groups on Facebook. And I'll be the first to say that. And then I make it very known like share and I have share highlighted in big letters. The more you share, the more you earn. I will send your party link to you and you can copy and share it offline as a reminder. You might have people that aren't on Facebook. And then I go over interaction. The more you like, love, comment, tag your people in something that you think they would be interested, the more your guests are going to be involved in this party. So really our job is to paint them a step-by-step -step picture. It's literally like me saying, hey, you have a math test tomorrow, here are the answers. And I'm literally giving them every single answer. And if you're not doing these things, I promise you, if you implement these things, you will start to see a bigger PRV increase. And not just that, but you should be talking to your host throughout the entire party. You should be connecting with her like, hey, I'm going to go live on this day. Are you still able to join me? Have you reached out to the people you invited to accept the group to do all the things? So hostess coaching is huge. I can't stress that enough. Um, any, but I mean, I don't know if Bree or Donna want to share a little bit more about hostess coaching. That's kind of my big thing. Um, and I did and I totally lost it. Um, Make sure too, you guys, if you haven't already bought this, this needs to be one of the tools that you invest in because this is like your, um, what the product training guide. So if you're getting asked questions about something specific, it tells you features, benefits, sales tips. I mean, it goes over all of it. So if you're getting a question about a diffuser and you may not have the answer, it's going to be at your fingertips if you have this. If you don't have this, Obviously, search in the workstation, go to your group and search it, go to your sponsor, so on and so on, up the chain. Um, but this is huge for me too. And sometimes I'll even throw this in my bag parties because I want them to have all the information at their fingertips. Um, I don't know, Bree, Donna, if you guys want to add anything to hostess coaching. So I have a few things to add. Um, number one, I would say for me, um, I heard this on a training earlier this year and it like really rang true for me because it's something that I've not been doing. So I, I watched this training and it was mostly for new consultants, but with the season we're in of resetting our business, I felt like it was absolutely perfect. She talked about how you shouldn't go for the for sales. So like when you're launching your business or you're relaunching your business, you shouldn't just go for the sales. You should go for the parties. You should ask and book six different parties to start your business. Like I could say, Hey, Lisa, do you want to buy a six pack of wax? Or, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm launching my Scentsy business. I wanted to see if you needed anything. And then maybe Lisa will buy a six pack of wax, but instead we should be flipping the script and saying, Hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting started launching or relaunching my Scentsy business. And I thought of you and thought maybe, you know, you could have me ha help me out and host this and party for me. And, you know, like a lot of times these people that you're asking when you're trying to get your yeah. six people, they should be the yeah, ones that like you are most comfortable with. But
Um, so then what happens is Lisa's probably going to say yes. And she's going to have a, a party with me. Well, then now I'm getting all those other people as a connection instead of just stopping with getting Lisa's six pack of wax $30 order. So this really happened when I launched my business. My babysitter Lisa had a party for me because I asked her, not because she asked me. I went out and asked her. And that's a super super hard conversation to have. She ended up having a $1,200 party. Like I, I was just beside myself. I was like, oh my gosh, it works. Um, now, when we talk about host coaching, I think the biggest thing is for me, when I was a newer consultant, I just expected people to know how to have parties and they don't, they don't know how to have parties. So it's not like you can, um, you know, just hand them the stuff and be like, good luck. It doesn't work like that. You have to like, just like Jessica and Donna said, you have to give them the step-by-step -step directions to make it as successful as you need it to be. And um, when I started doing that, I saw way bigger results. And um, something I do is I give them daily things to post to um, on their wall. So, you know, today we might be highlighting fragrance flowers and I send them a typed up post with the, what images I want shared. And that way it's not only sharing to the group of people that they specifically asked, it's also sharing to people on their Facebook. They can also share it to their Instagram stories. They can also share it um, on their Facebook stories. Because what I find is in our day of age, people don't want to go to the parties. They're just, they're partied out. A lot of people are partied out. And like, I'm one of them. I won't always um, go to someone's party, but I will place an order. If someone either asks me or somebody shares about it. So definitely going back and teaching people how to do, have the successful parties. Also um, teaching your hostesses that at the end of the parties, making sure that they follow up with their friends that they invited who have not ordered. So sending the, the last reminder messages, they, they are sending, the, um, the hostess is sending to their friends the last minute, host, the last minute party orders. Um, Courtney, who is one of my directors, she has had a us born book party and she had added me to the party page. You know, first she asked me if I wanted to be added. We're friends. So I'm like, yes, of course. And I just, I did not participate because I don't participate in parties. I just, I don't have time for that. And um, I kind of had forgotten about it, to be honest with you. But then what happened was, Courtney sent me a last minute message like, hey, did you want to place an order for my us born book party? And I was like, absolutely. Like I completely forgot. Went online, placed the order. So you have to keep in mind that there are customers and consumers out there that don't want to do the parties, but they still want to help their friends out. So it's really important to teach your hostesses to reach out to those people. Was I started doing um, party packs. So you, I'm really big on the bag parties. I feel like that is the easiest thing for me to implement with my crazy life. And I feel like it gets the most, um, the best, I guess, rewards out of it is because I have a lot of people that can smell it and then they order. Well, of course COVID hit and people weren't taking the bag parties anymore. So I was like, how can I get these scents under people's noses? So I started doing party packs um, and I would put together like, it could be as small or as big as you want. And, um, you know, you could send a catalog, you could send a few um, wax samples, you could send a bath sample, you could send a laundry sample, you could send all the samples. What I do is I find out what my customers are interested in. So I lay out like the different kind of categories and I'll say like clean, uh, fruity, floral, um, woodsy, like different things like that. And I send them on that list what they're interested in because I'm not going to send someone fresh scents if they're not interested in those. So if they're interested in fruity, then it gives me an idea of like, okay, they would be interested in these kind of things. So after I send that, I send it in the mail and they get it. Um, and this is part of their party that we do. And I leave the party open for about a week. And during that week's time, I'm just posting some general information, but really the party packs does the partying for us. 
because the customer is receiving their party pack and they're trying out and smelling the products. And then it's my hostess's job to follow up with those customers that got the party packs, find out what they're loving and to get the order from them. And it has been really successful for me. People love getting their hands on the products. Um, and it was the way that I was able to still party even though COVID was going on. So sometimes you just got to think outside the box and figure out what works. Um, I have a lot of people that are like, well, I can't send full catalogs in the mail. Like that costs $3.50 each to mail, plus throwing in all the samples, it just gets to be too much. But it can be simple, as simple as your business allows. It could literally be the stickers from the Sensi Success Store when they come back. It could be all 10 of the new season stickers. It could be a felt sample of the scent of the month. It could be a scent of the month brochure. Um, and then it could be a product showcase list like this. And that could all send for one stamp, 50 cents. That would be enough. That would seriously be enough to open the door and to get people talking. And then once you're highlighting the products and once your hostess is talking to them and getting the order from them, it works. So sometimes you just got to think outside the box and figure out what works. Um, I think everything we've shared tonight was fantastic. I know firsthand I've not been doing parties like I should have been. I was merely in survival mode this fall. So I'm really excited to get back at it and to start booking some new parties so we can get some new contacts. Did anyone else have anything to share? I was gonna go off of, so I found this idea somewhere else, so it's not my idea. So going off of exactly what Bree said about thinking outside the box. So another leader posted this in a director share group. And to be honest, I've never done this and I am very intrigued to do it because I think sometimes we overcomplicate and we compare ourselves, which then we get discouraged because we focus more on it having to be perfect or my system having to be like Donna's. And I'm here to tell you, use what you have for starters. But listen to what another um, consultant is doing. She writes, changing things up. I'm doing a personal challenge for No Wax November. Obviously, this took place in November. Next month, and I'm focusing on new pod parties to introduce new products because let's be real, this fragrant, fragrant system is bomb. So basically what she's doing is she is focusing on like, hey, I'm going to have a bag party. And it is only going to consist of a pod, a wall fan, and maybe a mini fan. Because then she's introducing a completely different product to somebody else. A lot of times, all of our customers know wax and warmers, right? So how are we going to get them to engage or like or buy a different product? So then she says that she includes a wall fan, a pack of pods, a handful of testers that are only available in pods, a catalog, order forms sent to the month warmer of the month flyer. And then she created a little um, flyer in Canva. So it got me thinking more. Like it's, I feel like another creative. So we talk a lot about creative marketing. Like this is a perfect example of creative marketing. You could sit there and you can have a wall fan party. You can have a mini fan party. You can have a body line party. You can have a laundry party where you're sending out just those specific things rather than saying who wants to have a sensey social. Well, if you're talking about something maybe specifically, maybe that is going to engage somebody that wouldn't normally host. Maybe they are like, yeah, I really like to do laundry. Not me, but maybe somebody. And they're going to be intrigued to be like, yeah, I want to know what Sensi Laundry has to offer. And you're just filling them up with samples. And that is what they're sharing. So kind of just throwing this out there because I just read it and I was like, this is kind of interesting. One more thing that I did want to bring up is party swap. So totally my opinion on this. And I, I'm curious to see what Brie and Donna feel about this too. So a couple years ago, I did party swap after party swap after party swap. And I quickly learned that if I am having a pure romance party, then a tastefully simple party, then a 31 party, then a Scentsy party, then a book party, then an Avon party, right? I know all these other direct sellers and I'm swapping with them because like, yeah, she's going to have a party for me. I'm going to have a party for her. Well, if all my friends and customers are buying from every single one of those different distributors, when are they going to have time to party for me? 
or time to buy from me. I've had them where it's been successful and I'm not telling you not to do them. I just encourage doing them where they are spread out, maybe like four times a year versus four times a month. I don't know, Bree, Donna, have you guys done that before? No, I do not have parties for other companies. I don't either. I support them and their parties. Mm -hmm. And I'm honest, if they message me and they ask me, I tell them that I'm a firm belief, like I don't like, let's, because the point of all this partying is, is our customers are supposed to become our friends, right? Mm -hmm. So we're inviting our friends to these parties. Who are we inviting? We're inviting our customers. You're yeah. having them buy from another company instead of buying from you because a lot of people have it in their budget. Maybe it's 50 or a hundred dollars or $25 a month or whatever for their fun spending money. Well, it's going to color street down the road and not to Cincy. So I personally will not have a party for other companies. Yeah. I just don't. And I did it. You guys, I did it. Um, a long time ago, probably like three years ago. And I really, truly learned the hard way when I was inviting my family, my Frank list, when I was inviting my friends and my acquaintances and all these people to these groups and events. And I was like, oh my God, they're spending their money that they could be spending on Sensi. And I am the same way. Now I typically do not have a party, um, but I do support them obviously because we support each other. Yeah. Um, does anybody else want to add anything or do they have questions for anybody? We have about nine minutes for open mic time. Hit up the chat or unmute yourself and let's hear from you. The only question that I saw, and I don't see it anymore, but I saw it before. Oh, right here. <clears throat> asking how many parties do we book ahead? Do you book parties ahead of monthly? Yeah, so Donna kind of touched on that and that's front loading, loading if I could talk tonight. Um, so your goal would be as you're going into February, at this point, you should already have your February parties booked. So when you're starting to go into February, now you're focusing on March parties. Oh, please, I have to open snacks with the child. Um, Tracy, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, I literally right now, I think I have for every direct sale company that you can imagine. And being in direct sales before with the company that I was with prior, um, I was that person that I was always approached first, like, hey, if you have a party for me or have, I'll have one for you. Most of the time, 90% of the time after, and I, I'm not trying to come off like rude, but most of the time, I feel like a lot of times, once they get what they want from you, they don't all the time return that favor. And I learned that the hard way. So I, um, I'm a kind of on that same boat where I am just I, I won't host parties for other people because like I said I've done it before and I was always that person that would host a party and I like I said 90 to 95 percent of the time I never got that back and so um finding that balance like I, even at, on the retreat like my, my inbox is just filled with a party after party after party after party. And I've had several people, you know, Hey, if you have one for me, I'll have one for you. No, I just, I, I can't do it because like I said, I hate, but I will, like I said, I'll support my friends. Like most of the time you don't get that in return. You just, you just don't. I feel like sometimes once they get that from you, you don't get it back. So sucks, but it happens a lot. That's kind of all I wanted to say. Totally agree. Yeah, that was a hard lesson learned. I did it one time. I will never, ever, ever do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really, that was really good. I think too, um, I personally do not like cold message people. And I hope nobody here does. All the time I get messages. Like for instance, me, it's mostly us form books. I'll be straight up honest and name the company. Um, a lot of times, like my friends will invite me because I'm a teacher. I love the books, but then the consultants are nonstop messaging me like every single month. Hey, I want to see if you want to host a party this month. 
The next, I do not respond to them. The next month, hey, I want to see if you want to host a party for me next month. Every single month. Like if someone does not respond to you, give them at least six months. Like you should not be in their inbox. And if you keep trying to go back to that person, it's probably indication that you need to go out and meet new, more people. So I think that is super important. Like there's not, I mean, I blocked numerous us born book people because they do not leave me alone. So I think that's something to like keep in mind. And honestly, when I get messages like that, it makes me feel icky inside. And then it makes me realize like, I never want to be somebody like that. It's all about building those relationships first. And then they're going to want to have a party for you because they want you to succeed and they want to support you. I actually, because I, I was in the car and I had my list of like everything I was going to say to y'all. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is it's not about the money. It's about the activity and it's about caring. We aren't here just to make a paycheck. I mean, yeah, we are, but we're here to make connections and we're here to show activity and we're here to share our love. That way these people are drawn to want to host a party. That way after the end of their party, if I make them feel connected enough to Cincy, hopefully they're going to want to flip that party and join and boom, you got a new consultant. So that's one point I did want to point out because that was a, like something for me that really spoke to me. So I see um, Danielle added something in the chat. She says, I get messages from people asking for money because I do online business. That is something that happens. Um, it happens to me all the time. And this is my suggestion to you. And you might already do this. Like I set aside at the beginning, beginning of the year and I'm like, this is how much money I'm going to allot for donations or sponsoring, especially living in a small town. Now we're poor over here. These kids don't have money for uniforms or there's, there, they can't do fundraising right now because of COVID or whatever the reason is. But I say you sit down and do a hard thinking and say this year I'm going to give whatever, $50, $500 or whatever it might be. And remember, it's a tax write-off. So keep that in mind. And then when, when that limits out, it limits out. And I just tell them, I really appreciate you asking me for a donation this year. I have already maxed out my budget. I gave a donation to another organization in my town, but please put me on your list and ask me next year and maybe I can help you then. I suggest putting a cap on that because that is going to happen more and more and the more your name gets out there and they think we're making millions, which we're not, but we are one day yet. We're not yet, right? But uh, they they do. They, they think that you know, you just have money running out of your ears because you run an online business. So I suggest um, keeping your peace there and putting a limit on it ahead of time. Is there anybody else? Looks like we have two minutes left if anybody has anything they want to add or ask any questions. And what do you guys, what, I know we've done this um, for January, we put in the chat. So we're going ahead and we're already preparing for February Zoom calls for Monday night. So we need some subjects to discuss. So if you guys will drop something in the chat, this is what, we, what we're training on on Mondays is what you guys have asked for. So if you don't mind, go ahead, drop it, drop, drop it, drop it in the chat so that we know what to be planning for trainings for, for February and even into March. So it could be over anything that we haven't already trained on this month. Um, or maybe we can touch on some things. I know we have some new brand new consultants in here. We can go back and touch on some things. So if you guys would please put that in there. Recruiting. And I do want to say that I, I would love to share more. Um, I, like I said, I want to put my, my feet, my whole body into this and so whenever I have opportunity to share, y'all just let me know because I would love, love, love to be more in tune with my Cincy family than I have been, seriously. Girl, you can share all day, every day with us. There is no stopping over here. <laughs> we prefer to have like, not prefer, that's not the right word. We've started trying to do like half the calls a month, someone outside of our teams. And then the other couple of calls, us in within our team and and I will tell you this too you don't have to be 
see a director or above to lead a training call. If you guys feel like there's something in your heart that you want to share, then you put it in this chat and you will get that. You can do that. It's, we don't want to be the ones to do it all the time. We That's why we have all this community going on. So it doesn't have to be a director above that leads a call or if you even just say like, I just want to speak for five minutes because everybody has something that they can share. Everybody. Teamwork makes the dream work, guys. I mean, we're all at the same level whenever we start a new month. So don't be scared to speak up. Nope, not at all. We have recruiting down, basic day-to-day -day compliance. Ooh, I'll let Jessica and Bree do that one. Back up somebody. No, I'm kidding. We're going to phone a friend for that one. <laughs> you get interaction from guests. I tried to do a live bingo and nothing. Okay, so those are about all good done. things, good subjects. Anything else? We have uh, about negative one minute. We're fixing to end the call. If you guys want to drop in the chat real quick. And Becca, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing. We appreciate you. No problem. Like I said, I have a fire and I want everybody to have it too. Now, now everybody freeze. Y'all know what the, I'll be saying y'all's picture. <laughs> it's going to go on my Facebook and my stories. And if I don't have you on there, then I will not tag you. But if I have you, then I'll ta be tagging you. So I already screenshotted y'all. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was saw yours and I was like, look at her looking all pretty. And I'm like, <laughs> one, two, three. Gotcha. Everybody needs to share. All right, you guys. Well, I think that is a wrap for our last, is it the last Monday? No, we have the 31st. I don't know dates apparently, but it is one of our last of January, mix it up Mondays. Um, it is the last Monday. I had to look at my calendar. Um, I will give you a spoiler alert that we will have a guest speaker on February 8th. She is another director and is going to show us all things about Trillo, T-R-E-L-L-O. So if you don't know what it is, I would maybe do a little bit of searching now so you can kind of prepare yourself for it. Um, I'm super excited. I know Bree's super excited. She had um, a one-on-one -on -one training with her. Um, so we're excited. In February's, we will be moving to 8 p.m. Um, that doesn't mean we're not gonna be back at seven, maybe in March. Yes, Amanda, exactly how you wrote it. Um, I will get this stopped recording and uploaded to YouTube so we can share and I will share it on my page, Donna's page and Bree's page. Make sure that you tag your teamies because the ones that showed up for one, thank you. I know that not everybody can show up, other things happen in life, but now it is our job to tag our teamies in this because you guys, is cliche. I always say it sounds so cliche, but knowledge is power. And I'm telling you, the more that you can invest yourself in training and in showing up, the more that you are going to grow and evolve. So you guys have a great week. Let's end January strong. Um, and we'll see you guys next Monday. Bye everybody.